My name is Steve, and I just made up this quick demonstration to show off some of the stuff I've been working on with Mira and Codename One. In particular, I've been uh, working on better ways to convert between JSON data and POJOs. So, first of all, a quick uh, uh, intro. If you don't know what Codename One is, it's a, a great uh, framework for building cross platform mobile apps in Java. Uh, you should check it out. Uh, there should be links uh, around this video that'll take you to the website. Um, now on uh, JSON parsing, in case you're not familiar with JSON, it's used to transfer data from server uh, to clients uh, commonly. Uh, and it's needed in almost every app I've ever written. So in Codename 1, uh, the general uh, pattern for parsing JSON is you'll get the JSON as a string you use the JSON parser class that's part of the uh, Codename 1 library and then you parse it into a map. Trouble with, uh, I mean this is great, that's nice and easy uh, but a map and inside the map will be primitive types uh, corresponding to the, the different uh, attributes of the, of the JSON that's in there and if it's got a sub uh, object that'll be a map, if it's got a sub list that'll be a list etc. Trouble is, we're working in a Java world when we're doing Codename 1, so we often need to take that map and convert it into a Java object uh, because we've probably created a whole bunch of types uh, to, to manage all the models in our application. Uh, so what you often do is manually copy the data uh, attribute by attribute from the map or, or the list into the Java objects. This is uh, tedious and error prone, I find. Um, now, the next thing you might want to think uh, try is to see if there's a library out there like Jackson that will automatically convert uh, the JSON to the Java types. Uh, I mean, there's lots of libraries out there. Jackson's one of the more popular ones. The trouble is, it requires reflection. And Codename 1 doesn't have reflection because that would require us to include the entire Java class library potentially because we don't know what's being used until runtime. So here's an alternative I've been working on uh, thanks to Mira. Uh, if you're not familiar with Mira, it's uh, this great language that was developed by Charles Nutter that uh, compiles down to Java bytecode with no compile time dependencies and has a syntax somewhat like Ruby. Uh, one of the nice things about Mira is that it allows you to write macros that are evaluated at compile time that can actually modify the uh, syntax tree so you can actually generate classes, you can generate an entire methods, uh, you can do all kinds of stuff uh, with them. And here uh, I have created a Mira macro called uh, Data Mapper that will automatically generate a class to do this uh, mapping from JSON to the uh, to any given Java type. So uh, well that's uh, that's what I've got here. Now let's uh, let's look at an example. Okay, so as an example, I'm going example of some JSON data. I'm going to use the DIY OSCON schedule. Uh, it was uh, OSCON was a conference I attended in July, and uh, they put up their schedule as a public JSON feed and challenged people to create their own schedule apps. Uh, and so they published exactly what attributes are are part of the uh, the schedule. Uh, they've got events, speakers, venues. The uh, JSON looks like this. So it's got a root, conferences, etc. So let's uh, let's begin by installing the appropriate uh, macros. I'm going to use NetBeans uh, for this example. So I've got a. Uh, well, first of all, make sure that NetBeans has the Mirror NetBeans module installed. Uh, this is one that I've developed, and you can get it from uh, GitHub. My GitHub page is the Mira-NBM. There should be some links associated with this video so you can find it. So make sure that's installed. And uh, then we're actually going to Mira Macros. I've got another project called CN1 Mira JSON Macros and this is where I keep all of this good stuff. So you just go to the releases and in the latest release uh, you're going to want to download the CN1 data tools 2.cn1lib and the cn1mira json-macros jar. Uh, 
as this provides all of the stuff that you're going to need for this tutorial. And uh, let's start out by making a new project in NetBeans. And this also assumes you've installed the Codename 1 plugin because that'll give you the Codename 1 project. So I'm going to choose Codename 1 project, click Next, and uh, demo uh, JSON to Pojo. And demo, JSON demo, and I'll do a uh, native theme, a manual, and uh, there I go. And we'll go to finish. So once I've got my uh, project. I've got my uh, bare bones application here uh, in it. Now, uh, I need to make sure that I've got my data tools and macros installed in this application. So, we'll download the uh, data tools and we'll download the macros. And I'm going to go to it in downloads. I'm going to open up two windows. So we've got documents. Actually, let's get it straight from here. I can't remember where this uh, demo to Pojo tools show and finder. So this is my uh, project folder, and inside the lib directory, that is where I'm going to copy the data tools.cn1 lib file, just directly inside the lib, cn1 lib, and the macros, I need to create a couple of subdirectories inside lib, so I'm going to go new uh, well, I'll do it inside NetBeans. So inside the lib folder, I'm going to go new folder, and I'm going to name this Mira. And inside that one, new folder, and name this macros. So it's in lib Mira macros, and you can see it should be here now. And I'm just going to drag this in there. Okay. And I first thing I need to do is so that I know that it's picking up the uh, libraries that I just installed, I'm going to right click on my project in the Project Explorer and go Refresh Libs. And so it should pick up my project then. So uh, the next step is let's create some model classes. Um, I happen to have already uh, created this application before, so I'm going to cheat and pull in some models from uh, from there. Uh, so I'm, the way I'm going to design my models, though, is I'm going to look at the O'Reilly entities here, and they say for events, we've got uh, serial, uh, name, event type, it's one of these, um, time start, time stop, venue serial. So if I look at my uh, event class, it's going to look pretty much like that. I'm going to use camel case. You see time stop instead of there time start and time underscore stop there. And uh, speakers, uh, string categories. So I've got this nice model. It has nothing to do with JSON here, but it is a, ni a nice model. And I am going to uh, copy that into my application. Well, first let's create a package called models. and create a new class called event. Well, there it is. I'll at least do some manual typing here. So private string serial, private, private string name, and Event type is a string two, private 
string key by type. Okay, so let's actually just start and go this far. So we've got uh, events with three items here. Uh, we're also uh, going to have schedule. So let's uh, create a new Java class called schedule. Now the schedule represents the overarching uh, event. It, it has events in it, it has speakers, and it has venues. Okay, and the schedule really just has events, speakers, and venues. So let's start out by just adding private list uh, event, events, since we only have events so far. And make sure it's a Java util list. Okay, and we're going to use a nifty feature, NetBeans, uh, to encapsulate the fields so that we can just generate the appropriate getters and setters. And we'll go into event, same thing. Uh, refactor, encapsulate, and select all, factor, and here we go. So we've got event type. Okay, so this should be ready to go. Now let's uh, let's use these. Oh, the, the next thing we need to do is actually add our Mira uh, data mapper. This is the only bit of Mira we're going to use here. Um, I advocate trying to sprinkle in as much Mira as possible, but uh, for now we're going to keep it simple and just uh, use a minimal amount of Mira that will benefit uh, our Java. So let's create a, a class called data mappers and uh, this could be called anything. It's just a way to write a little bit of Mira. I don't actually need this class. And I'm going to create a data mapper for each of our uh, classes here. So data mapper. And we'll, we're going to create one for schedule. We're going to call it schedule mapper. And data mapper event, event mapper. Okay, we've got an error here for some reason. I'm not sure. Do I need to have these together like that? Oh, yeah, that made it happier. Okay, so we've got schedule and schedule mapper. So now if we go back in uh, to our application, say JSON demo, let's just go into the start menu here. And for now, we're just going to put some straight code in there. So let's create our schedule mapper. And notice that it actually picks up the schedule mapper class. It's because it's uh, doing background compiling and it's already picked it up. And event mapper, event mapper equals new event mapper. Okay, and we need to register the event mapper with the schedule mapper so that it, when, it, when it reaches the, uh, uh, the events property that it knows it can use this one. So let's uh, mapper register event class. And uh, event class event mapper, and of course we need to include the event class also. Now let's uh, parse a little bit of JSON data. So we're going to go mapper read JSON from URL and. Let's get the URL for the OSCON feed. This is a string. And then we're going to actually schedule, schedule equals. Oh, yes, it throws an exception. 
Actually, we can't do that. Okay, and just to verify that this worked, well, let's start out by uh, uh, just logging some information. Log in, uh, num events schedule get events size. Okay, now let's uh, let's run this example here. Something went wrong here. Target null pointer exception JS demo 57. Okay, so evidently it did not get. Oh, I know why it didn't get events. It's because if we look at this uh, JSON, the schedule is actually not the root element, it is a, a sub element. So we should be, we might have to do this. To indicate, oh, maybe it's that yeah, it's the last one. Okay, I need to specify a path to get the root schedule. There we go. Now let's run this. Okay, and what do we got? Num events is four hundred and eighty-four. Now we can actually, let's actually uh, loop through the events. Okay, for event e schedule get events. Rp get name, we'll say. There we go. So this should output a whole bunch. Okay, there we go. So it's just uh, listed all of the events. Now I'm going to skip forward a little bit uh, because I've actually got a project where I've already done this. Uh, you can see all my models. You can see I, uh, I went into a few extra places. Uh, I mean, we, when I flesh it out, it's also got date, speakers, and uh, I don't want to get into all the details here. So uh, let's run this the actual application, just so you can get a feel for how quickly you can get up and running with something like this. Okay, loading the schedule, and there. In this case, we're, we're looking at the schedule and list, and it's just showing you the event data. So I've got this example online. You can uh, download it. It's actually a, a subdirectory of the uh, JSON macros project. So it's OSCON schedule and it's got the whole app there. It'll run on uh, pretty much uh, anything or you can build it for iOS, you can build it for Android and you can, uh, right now I'm just running it on the simulator. So the point of this video was just to show you how with a, a tiny little bit of Mira you can create these data, ma data mappers that will uh, automatically convert to uh, from JSON to any Java types that you've developed in your application. Very, very useful in my experience with uh, Codename One applications. Uh, I'm going to continue uh, in future videos showing you a little bit more of this example and uh, how to build this uh, events application. Thank you for watching this video.